All right, everyone, welcome to uh, Spinnaker Summit at CDCon 2023. Uh, we're co-located here with CDCon and GitOpsCon, and there's also the Open Source Summit going on. I'm Cameron Modavasalani. I'm an engineering manager at Armory and a Spinnaker TOC chair. Um, this is the state of Spinnaker. So first, I wanted to go over the project history. I gave a, a presentation of this to the CDF uh, TOC a few weeks ago and thought it would be uh, good to just go over that with the community as well. So Spinnaker was first created by Netflix in 2015. Uh, you can see Git commits back, back, all the way back then. Uh, the project was open sourced after Google joined the project. Over time, Op Armory and OpsMX joined the community and started to participate and really make uh, uh, Spinnaker, the open source community it is today. Uh, we were participating yearly in the Google Summer of Code, and we were hosting week-long community hackathons. And then COVID happened. Uh, we had some major contributors and community leaders that, that left the project. Contributions went down. The steering committee and the technical oversight committee were not as engaged as they were in the past. The release process had some issues, it was broken, but we had Salesforce join as a major contributor. We took a look around and we said, hey, there's still a lot of people using Spinnaker today. Large companies, large enterprises, and there's a dedicated community to Spinnaker. So we said, hey, let's get together and revive the community. So we started off by meeting in person in Austin 2022 at CDCon about one year ago. We recruited a variety of new technical oversight committee members and we went down the list and we, we looked up uh, major contributors, vendors, and then some of the largest users of Spinnaker. We wanted to have a good variety of folks to show that there's large companies, uh, vendors, etc., dedicated to the project. So we went with nine members total. This wasn't done in isolation though. We worked with the previous technical oversight committee, steering committee, and the CDF on updating the governance structure. We combined the technical oversight committee and the steering committee into one group. And the intent there was to make decision making more agile. Before I talk about the, the motivations and how we, we got together uh, to, to get alignment on uh, the community direction. I um, just wanted to talk about the, a talk I saw yesterday. Uh, Robert Reeves gave a really good talk about how to show business value to your organization. How do you affect change? As engineers, we see the value of continuous delivery, but it's hard to bring other folks along, along the way. So just wanted to shout that out because I saw a lot of uh, comparisons and parallels with the work that we did uh, reviving the community. So we talked with all these members that, that were interested in joining and participating, and we gathered motivations for joining the Technical Oversight Committee. We, we then used those motivations for setting expectations for TOC members and for aligning uh, on the project roadmap. Some of the top motivators included increasing contributions. That's the lifeblood of any open source project is the contributions. But other motivators included using more open standards, reducing breaking changes, having a really good stable product, and improving on the release process. Right on, so let's recap what we did in 2022. Well, we fixed the release process. Uh, big thanks to David and Carl Skews for, for working on the release process and, and bringing it to fruition. There's still more improvements to come, and we'll, we'll go over some of those later. We're also setting up the release manager rotation, and now it's not just uh, one company doing releases anymore. We've got uh, at least three of us and more getting onboarded as time goes on. We also restarted the RFC process. RFCs are requests for comments, and that's how you affect change in the community. You put out your idea of how you want to affect or impact the project, and then get comments on it. And then we collaborate on the, the right way of implementing a new feature. So three RFCs have been approved since we restarted this process. Those include uh, the monorepo. So we're going to be going towards uh, uh, 
consolidating our repos into a mono repo, uh, CD events, as well as backporting changes behind feature flags. These RFCs have already had a really major impact on uh, the, the community development. All right, so let's go over what we've done in 2023 so far. So we've been improving contributions to Spinnaker. We're reducing the barrier of getting ent of entry for getting started. Uh, Carl Skews has been working on and has donated uh, the Spinnaker Customize repo, and that's a great way to install. We're also working on modernizing Spinnaker. This includes upgrading Java, Spring, and Gradle. Uh, this is done for a few different reasons. Modern language uh, features are great to use. It also helps improve security. Keeping up to date with the latest patches uh, makes sure that you, you have few CVEs within your, your code base. And then we're working on the mono repo. This is gonna help simplify both development and release. Spinnaker is comprised of uh, 10 or 11 microservices, and we have a common library as well. The dependencies for this is not trivial. If you make a change to the common library, it then propagates to the other services. If you make a change to Orca, it propagates to CloudDriver. If you make a change to Fiat, it updates a few other services. As you can see, this causes a lot of, of uh, changes, and it's really hard to keep things aligned. By moving to a mono repo, it's really gonna help simplify and make sure that our changes are, are correct when, when we make them across the project. We're also working on CD events integration. Uh, that's, that was one of the RFCs that was uh, uh, approved and merged. And we're working on triggering pipelines based on CD events coming in. Next steps for that though is to become a producer of CD events. Once we produce CD events, we can start to join this ecosystem of, of projects that integrate with uh, CD events. And then performance improvements. We've had some pretty large performance improvements uh, in, the, in the past, and we're gonna continue seeing those as time goes on. Right on, and now let's talk about some industry trends that we're seeing uh, today. So first, I just wanted to go over this idea of crawl, walk, run. The way that a lot of people get started with continuous delivery and continuous deployment on their digital transformation journey, if you will. Uh, a lot of folks are, are doing manual deployments and they, they see all these shiny tools out there and uh, hear terms like um, declarative delivery, uh, imperative delivery, and, and so on. What do all these things mean? It's, it's confusing when you're first starting out. If you go from manual steps directly to uh, declarative, that's gonna be a pretty hard transition. So I definitely see this trend of crawl, walk, run really uh, uh, playing out in companies today. So there's a case study I've linked here, and there was a, uh, a company that automated the manual steps. They had a 250%, 256% return on investment in that. What did that do? It gave them time savings, and it also improved the correctness. By taking manual steps out, you're, you're reducing the, the um, possibility of, of issues. This also helps your engineers focus on different types of work. There is a real opportunity cost to having your developers spend time manually deploying and having to roll back and understand your, your infrastructure. Um, any issues that might come up, that's now time taken uh, back. That's, that's time taken away from your, your developers and they also have to fix it. So that really in increases the time taken to uh, deploy a new feature. So, Let's take a look at uh, what you can do with the time you have saved once you automate things. So this is another trend that, that I've been seeing and it's using the right tool for the job. When you have the time to invest in, in uh, your organization and your, your capabilities, you can now use the right tool for the job. So Prime Video uh, posted an article recently where they moved their, from their Lambda solution to EC2 and ECS. They saved 90% of their infrastructure costs doing this. This has not just cost savings, but also a great environmental impact. We're no longer they are no longer shoving uh, bits just for the, the sake of moving bits around. 
And this is not at all to say that their choice of Lambda was a bad choice. That's really what helped get them started. It's easy to get started, and they were able to run fast with it. And just to show it's not just me thinking this, here's a quote from Kelsey Hightower. Uh, he's saying, you know, this isn't to dig against Lambda at all. This, there's a quote within the, uh, the article that Prime Video posted about uh, how it was a good solution for them. But they had to migrate deployment targets. They, weren't, they were deploying to Lambda at first, and then they're deploying to EC2 and ECS. Uh, how do you do that with one tool? Well, Spinnaker can do that. Another trend that we're seeing right now is, is open standards. So there, there's a few different success stories that I'd like to highlight. There's the Open Telemetry project, which is gaining a lot of traction. There's also the Service Mesh Interface Spec, which has drastically improved the, the way service meshes um, integrate today. We also see a lot of users leaving Twitter and going to Mastodon. People want to uh, take control of their own, uh, their own data and have the ability to, to be a bit portable. And I'd like to go back to the idea of CD events. This is a, a spec that's based on cloud events, and it, that comes from the CNCF. CD events are a, a subset that builds on top of that, and I would encourage everyone to check out the CDF events special interest group. Finally, we, have a, we see mergers and acquisitions on the rise. So Carta released a report, uh, the Q2, Q1 2023 uh, investor landscape. How is that relevant to Spinnaker or CD in general? Well, a lot of us work at large, large companies and large enterprises. Um, when you acquire a company, you're not just acquiring the people, you're acquiring their tech as well. And while it might not happen overnight, you do eventually integrate that tech and into, your, uh, into your central organization. There's a lot of uh, benefits for doing this. Uh, we talked about cost savings earlier, but this also really helps with compliance. If you have a really fragmented uh, way of managing your infrastructure, that gets really hard to just understand and wrap your head around. As a CTO or CIO, you wanna know what your infrastructure you're running and paying for. Well, Spinnaker has the ability to manage all of that. Again, this is challenging as companies are acquired and then your teams use new technologies. Right now, Kubernetes is really hot, but there might be some other tool that is the right tool for the job. And if you need to deploy there, it's gonna be hard if you're not using a, a tool like Spinnaker. So yeah, Spinnaker allows for many deployment targets and uh, allows for managing and identifying the infrastructure you're using.